everyone. Um, this is the first uh, track session of the morning. Um, and we're going to kick off with an introduction to AI. Um, now, Nora's come over from San Francisco to present this. Uh, and it's her first PyCon AU. So please make Nora feel welcome. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Wow. Let's talk some deep learning. Let's talk some AI. OK, just a few words about me. I'm originally from Sweden. I've been living in San Francisco for a year and a half. And currently, I'm doing my master thesis at a company called Shang Zuckerberg Biohub. That's basically a non-profit non like medical center where research center where they want to cure all the diseases. And it's Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla, who are funding that nonprofit. So just a quick overview today. I'm going to talk a bit about how to find an idea and a bit about collecting data, which is a very important resource, especially when you want to train your neural network. And the last part is, of course, the training, which is the most exciting part. And just before we begin, uh, usually when you think about like, state-of-the-art deep learning or AI, you think about complex solutions like self-driving cars or intelligent assistants like Google Home or Alexa or what I'm doing at the Biohub. So we're trying to predict how cancer cells are communicating by using neural networks. But I want to emphasize with this talk that it doesn't have to be a complex solution. It could be something easy, simple. It could be something that you're passionate about, or a simple day-to-day -day problem, or perhaps like a mega trend, a globalization, or demographical shifts. Uh, so what did I, what's my topic, or what it's, what's my idea? It's basically a day-to-day -day problem. I'm spending a lot of time in front of the mirror, putting on makeup. And uh, for inspiration, I'm using, I'm looking at some tutorials um, on YouTube. The only problem is that if you type search for makeup tutorials, you get over 30 million results. I mean, it, I'm seriously, it's like a lot of results. And this combined with beauty being a $400 billion market, it shows that beauty work and makeup is probably a significant part of people's lives. So my idea is a combination of putting on makeup and trying to find the right inspirational tutorial for it. And how do you know which one of these 30 million videos that will be suitable for your facial features. So I thought, why not use a deep learning network for finding out? So that's the idea. And the key takeaway with this is just it doesn't have to be a complex problem. It can be as simple as makeup. The second part, data, the most valuable resource. Creating a data set. So deep learning. Um, So deep learning methods are, are excelling in taking high dimensional data like videos and images and just over here. Yeah, taking high dimensional images and classifying them into discrete categories. But for this talk, I'm focusing on a classification problem where the neural network is ex exposed to images and how it's dividing them into different categories. So it's a classification problem I'm focusing on right here. And back to the problem. How do, I, how do I build a network that helps me find the right video? So I looked at a lot of videos and started to research the facial features available, and there's a lot of them. But the most striking one were like the, eye, the, the region around the eyes. It's the most time-consuming part, and the, uh, there's a lot of videos like focusing on that. So my idea is, could you use some data to learn a neural network to understand eye shapes. So I looked into eye shapes. And apparently, there's four distinct different eye shapes. Round, monolid, hooded, and almond shape. There's a lot of like var varieties of them, but these are the four like distinct ones. And how do you create a data set uh, with eye shapes? I used an uh, open data set with hundreds of images of celebrities. 
I manually cropped out the I region and divided it into four different categories. And these are the four different eye shapes. So it's almond, hooded, monolith, and round eyes. And this is how the data, this is the data I used. It's a fairly small data set. I used 200, I cropped 200 images for training for each of the categories, and then 100 more for validation. And this is the structure. It's a fairly small data set to start with. And over to the training part, which is the most exciting, exciting part. And before that, just by the show of hands, how many here works with neural networks or convolutional neural networks? Okay. How many knows how a convolutional operation work? Okay, a few of us. So basically you can use, when you when you train a model, you can go train it from scratch and initialize it with random weights, or you can go with transfer learning, which is exactly what it sounds like. You're transferring learning from weights that are pre-trained. And that is what I did with my net because it was a small data set, just 800 images. I used pre-trained weights that seen over a million other images divided into a thousand different categories called the image net. And choosing a um, neural architecture, there's a lot of different models out there. Like if you have a smaller ones with very few operations or larger ones with a lot of operations. The one I used is called VGG16 and why? Because it's a fairly simple and straightforward architecture. It's easy to understand, it's easy to play around with it and also because I had a pretty small data set work with. And this is how the architecture looks like for VGG16. It's five blocks, each block with a convolutional layer and a pooling layer. And on the top, there is a fully connected layer, which is the one that predicts which image, which class the image belongs to. Basically, if you look into one of those, so there's the convolutional part, the block, and the pooling part. So essentially, every image can be uh, represented as a matrix with pixel values. So consider this image. Yeah, it's, it's simply, it, I <laughs> simplified it a bit because it's a color image that's supposed to be between zero and 255, but this, it's a very simplified example. Yeah. Also consider this two by two matrix. It's a filter or a transformational matrix. And the convolution of the image is basically this little matrix sliding over the original image. And for each step, it, may, it does an element Elemental, yeah, it works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, element-wise multiplication between the original image and the small little slide, sliding matrix. And for each step, you get, you get an integer, and that's the future, feature map for each image. And it's a bit abstract, but I will show you, show you later how they're all connected. And for the pooling step, you take this feature map and you reduce the dimensionality until, until the, very, the most important features. So it gets even smaller. Yeah. So that's the part, that's how the, the neural network that I work with. Okay. Um, since it's transfer learning, I, I locked all of the layers to uh, really use um, the pre-trained weights for the best. So instead of having this random matrix trying to understand the images, I locked all the layers and I, so the ones that swept over the original image already knew exactly how to understand shapes and contrasts and, and basically how images looks like. And I'll show you the, layer, the layers. So that's a feature, feature map right there. So you see all the deeper layers are with higher dimension, and then the dimension is getting lowered and lowered for the last words 
basically just some pixels. And you see some of them are pretty scary, <laughs> like this one over here. <laughs> yeah, and this is basically what the last fully connected layer sees. Yeah. And this is the funnel. And you see the, the higher dimension and how it gets reduced for each step until it, it classifies the emission to the four different categories. Okay. We used a nonlinear activation for the layers that are locked and a lo uh, linear activation for the fully connected layer. And just to recap, I use pre-trained weights. I used a fairly simple architecture called VGG16. Uh, I locked all the convolutional and the pooling layers. I used a dropout rate to get the model to generalize better. And the softmax for it the fully connected layer, and then I run it for 50 epochs, 16 images at a time, until the model has seen all of the images. Let's just recap. And it's, this, pre, it, maybe it sounds a bit complex, but really this is all code that is needed to, to really do these operations. So if you write this like 15 lines of code, you initialize the model, you build this little top, lock the layers that you want to use that you're already pre-trained, compile it, and save the model. And that's everything that's needed. So back to this little classification problem. Uh, what kind of accuracy do you think that MindNet received for the first time? Between zero and 100%. What do you think? How much? Any side? What do you think? 50. 50. All right. Anyone else? 80%. Okay, it's a fairly small data set, but it actually got between 90 and 93% for the first run. So, and it was pretty exciting because I just cropped this 200 images and put them all, stitched them all together, and, and I got this result. So, yeah, that's the training part. And because of the accuracy, because it was fairly high, I got really excited and I really wanted to try to take it from the idea phase into a real product. So I built a small app and I'll show it pretty, pretty soon. Super simple front end using Angular and Bootstrap. And the back end is basically just the model. So this is all the, the code that's needed, like 15 lines of code. The base model, the top model, and then just the pre-trained weights. So every, all of this into these few lines of code. And for the back end, I use uh, the Python web server framework Flask. And it's basically just taking an image from the front end and predict which one of the four classes it is and then returns the class. So front end that takes the picture, uploading it to the back end, the back end that predicts what kind of class it is and shows you the eye shape. So in conclusion, um, I love AI, and I throw deep learning on everything I could possibly find. I mean, makeup. Uh, but the thing I love even more is converting ideas into products, and I think that's a very important part of learning, like creating something end-to-end. -end. So I really encourage you to, to take even simple problem like this, like finding what kind of makeup suits you, and trying to make a, pro a product out of it. And I'll show you a real quick demo. So this is how the app looks like. Go for eye shape. Go for this. and the model predicted my eye shape. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'll stick around. Here's the repository if you want to train your own model. Just add all the images, and all the code is already there. It's pre-trained and everything. You just put a path to your images, and it will tell you which class it is.
Thank you. Do you want it to? Sorry, I'm just making the microphone work. Thank you, Nora. Um, and a little token of our appreciation, the Thank traditional so pipe on AU mug. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Um, Nora's asked to just have questions up the front afterwards. So um, thank you again, Nora.